Hello, let's let's do some open G tuning. G. So to tune to open G tuning, um, the fat string goes down to D. Looks like I'm a half step down, so I'm gonna have to come up. So this will be fascinating. So the fat string is gonna be a D. I'm just gonna do this using my tuner here. The uh, A string goes down to G from A. Fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> the fourth string would be a D. Remains a D. The third string remains G. I didn't realize I was down a half step. I was teaching a guy a kiss song. The second string remains a B. So we were a half step down on my SG Junior. First string goes down to D. So let's check that again. Fat string is a D. So you should go through it like three or four times when you're tuning. Fifth string is from A down to G. Fourth string, D. Third string, G. Take your time. Tune carefully every time. B, second string, stays a B. First string, down to D. All right, minor stable. So check, 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 double check. Now, why are we doing this? Because when you play the, usually you hit five strings. You've got a perfect G chord right there. If you want to hit the fat string, that's a D. Cool. If you hit a harmonic at the 12th fret, that's kind of nice. Or 7th fret. Or 5th fret. The thing about an SG is the necks are kind of rubbery. <laughs> Pretty, isn't it? Okay, let's do a shape. We're gonna use index and middle, and you're gonna make what looks like an A minor seven chord, which is your first finger on second string, first fret, middle finger, fourth string, second fret. That's a tongue twister to say. Okay, so you got this shape. It's hard to get the perfect angle, I'm sorry. Okay, making sure you got it. I don't want to lose anybody here. Okay, very easy. Got to be on your fingertips. I'm going to hit five strings slow. So we're on, and I'm going to take it off. So those fingers have to work together really well to go on off together. So if you're not used to this, you just take the time, put in it, put in your time. But wait, there's more. You can take it up. Check this out. That's the same shape at the third and fourth frets. So I'm arpeggiating versus just clobbering it here. I'm a clobber it. Why are we, why that? I, I like the arpeggiated sound for practice and warming up. Let's take it back to the first shape. Let's put a little echo effect on that just for fun.
take Echo out. Okay, hopefully you're doing okay. Uh, let's take it a little higher. The next shape I call a flat shape. I'm gonna use middle and ring at the fifth fret. I'm staying on the same string, second and fourth. Middle finger stays on the fourth string and you're gonna switch between index and ring. So it takes time, you know, it took me years to get this straight. So give yourself time and kind of work carefully, deliberately, keep it a little bit relaxed but focused. I like how pinky and index kind of spread out. It keeps me relaxed. If I tighten up, you know, I get run into trouble. So we kind of, I'll practice stretching as I go. Let's take it up two frets to seventh fret. That's my flat shape, seven, seven. And take her back down. I can slide. You can also hammer on. This is taking a while, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go back to the angle shape at uh, eight and nine, which is a G chord. Echo. It's called an Ibanez Echo Shifter. One of the best little echo pedals I ever had. Not too expensive. Ibanez Echo Shifter. Now, let's take it up to the flat shape at 1010, middle and ring. Oops, clobbered that fast string. It's not terrible, but it's a little distracting. and two frets up. It's kind of like the equivalent of starting over at the uh, 12th fret. So if you can go up and down, you got, or down. So that's, nice thing about that, there's no bars. But guess what, we're going to bar now. Bar, 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 bar chord. Okay, so when you bar, your index finger's got to be straight. Usually when I tell students to bar, lay your finger straight, we get something like this. I tell them, hey man, if you're, you got to make an alligator face. So like, because uh, when you come on here, straight, yeah, you can't bend like that. You can, but it's just going to be make it really hard. So you got to get really straight. See that? Alligator face. So like if a man was swimming along like this and an alligator with a bent face came up to bite his leg, man swims free. But if you got a straight face alligator, he's going to chomp that leg and take him down. So you got to have a straight alligator face when you bar. Let's go 12th fret. Woo, that sounds good. All right, so I'm hitting five strings, skipping the fat one. It should be really bell-like. Is that hard? Are you struggling? Usually people, if you're not used to barring, yeah, it is hard. But don't give up, just do a little every day and you'll have it in a week or two. If, if this is killing you. <laughs> okay, now, buddy. Friend, let's add middle and ring. Watch it. Woo! So I'm adding middle on second string. 
13th fret, ring, 4th string, 14th fret. That's the equivalent of how we started today. Only up here we're going... So you got to get good at keeping your index flat and adding those on and off accurately without them like, you know, getting all tangled. It's got to be real simple. And the only way to do that is repetition, focus, and repetition. Don't get too tense. Don't, if your arm's hurting, take a break. But let's, I'll put the echo on, just goof off for a minute. of this is it's highly movable we can play any key here's G here's F here's E here's D C B A and G I'm probably muting the fat string with the tip of my index finger. It's touching the fat string. Don't touch me! Okay, sorry. <laughs> so I'm just touching it to make it not ring. So I can strum. Not, I'm not hitting them hard either. I'm... stop it I give it a karate chop along the side of my hand when I go chop and I'm not really going like huh I'm just like letting my hand kind of flop over that's called muting so you really got to be able to mute and often where I start I put the side of my hand on the bridge Versus you might be hanging like this with your whole arm, like, ah, oh, my shoulder's falling off. That fixes it. That takes the weight, the strain off your shoulder. If you lay your hand on the bridge, it's not going to hurt, and you're going to hit the right string. It, it fixes all kinds of problems. But after you get good at that, you can swing around, you know, if you want to move around. You can move around, but if you want to take her easy, just stay on that bridge. All right, there's open G. If you like that, let me know. You can subscribe, give me a thumbs up, give me a like and all that crap. And uh, if you have questions about open G or any other things, um, I will respond and uh, make a video just for you. Cool, man. So I guess that's it. I'll see you later. Thanks.